Turn to Ephesians chapter 6 with me. I want to uh, welcome you uh, to our panel Sunday. It's always a highlight for us. If you've never been here on a panel Sunday, you're in for a, a real treat. You know, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that there is a daily battle. I mean, it's a daily battle for our joy. There's a daily battle for our peace, a daily yeah. battle for our blessings in life. Uh, it's just a, right. a battle for life and life mm-hmm. more abundant. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, I got it. You had a dead car battery this week. You had a flat tire on your way to work. Um, everybody in here can raise your hand. You had a refrigerator go out. All the food ruined. It never goes out when you're at home. It always goes out when you're away. And all the food ruins and it runs all over the floor. Uh, somebody gossiped about you. Somebody yeah. told a lie about you and hurt your feelings. Or uh, You work with a jerk. I mean, just, you just have a, a jerk that you work with. And there's no other way to explain it. He is bona fide jerk and he's in your office. Uh, there's a guy at school that just rubs you the wrong way. I mean, You've got an adult child that's a constant disappointment to you. I know all about that. We all, I mean, it's a constant disappointment to you. The boss didn't treat you fair. Oh, that boss. Just, uh, why do we let these things that are a part of life so get to us? I'm just yeah. telling you, if you have a vehicle of any kind, you're going to have a flat tire. If you don't have a flat tire, then just get rid of all your vehicles. I mean, you're going to have a flat tire. Yeah, but we got to understand, the devil did not make your tire go flat. You ran over a nail. Yep. <laughs> and a nail poked a hole in it. That's why you have a flat tire. Oh, the devil is... The devil did not make you have a flat tire. You ran over a nail and you got a flat. That's what happened. The devil did not make your car battery go down. And just battery cells last two to three years. You just unbelievable if you get four years out of a battery. You already know that on the front end when you buy it brand new. The devil didn't make you late for work. The battery just quit. Mm -hmm. We live life in an imperfect world. Uh, It's a part of life. And and we're not fighting against flesh and blood. The flat tire is not what you're fighting. Right. Mm -hmm. The, The jerk at your office, that's not what you're fighting. It is evil rulers, evil spirits in an unseen world that want to jerk you up about what is fairly normal in life for all of us. Nobody's day goes perfect. That's just a normal part of life. Let me read Ephesians chapter 6. Let's start in verse 10. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the breastplate of God's righteousness, the shoes for peace that comes from good news so you'll be fully prepared, In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith, stop the fiery arrows of the devil, Mm -hmm. put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit of all times and on all occasions. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. The Bible does not leave us stranded in this fallen, imperfect world. Put on your helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the shoes of peace, well, Tim, I read that and I don't have a clue what that means. I, I, I don't have a clue of what the helmet of my salvation is or how to put, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, here today, to turn this from a religious theory into how to apply this in everyday life, we got Corbin Stinson with us today. Uh, he just graduated from high school. We've got Kendall Greer, who is in nursing school in college. Sarah Barnett, who has three kids and a tough husband to live with. (laughs) We got Paul Kern, who has his kids raised, and I'm here as a grandfather. So we got all phases of life covered. So I don't want anybody leaving here, well, it just didn't apply to me. They didn't relate to me and where I am today. We're gonna relate to everybody here. Mm -hmm. When daily life happens, when the mighty powers of this unseen world wanna take just daily life Mm -hmm. and use that against us, What does this passage 
practically mean? Sarah, start us off. What, what does this passage practically mean to you? Well, one thing that I've learned about the armor is that, first of all, I need all of it, but I need all of it on all of the time. So I'm not <laughs> operating in it all the time. I walk around frustrated at the wrong people. Um, just like right. you said, the, the battle isn't against flesh and blood. And so if, I, if I'm not careful and I don't, if I'm not walking around in my armor, um, I, I, the blame goes to my kids or the blame goes to my husband yeah. and I get mm-hmm. frustrated at the wrong people. I had, I took all three of my kids to Old Navy, I don't know why, to go clothes shopping. <laughs> that was a bad idea. All three of them, I'm looking, looking for clothes, I'm shopping, and I look down and my three-year-old is gone. I'm like, great. I get frustrated, go in panic mode, going all over the store, I get to the front mm. of the store, and there he is riding the dog mannequin that was on display at the front of the store. <laughs> and I, a little bit embarrassed and a little bit frustrated, and I reacted out of that frustration. Mm-hmm. You know, if I don't have my armor on, yeah. you know, everything mm. that my husband says or does, it just sets me off, and I walk in a fit to what he does but if I have the helmet on if I have my breastplate if I have all of the armor on at all times I know that they're not my enemy the boss isn't my problem you know the teacher isn't my problem right. it's not my family that the enemy is the he is the one that I'm against right. and that's family. so good mm-hmm. that's exactly. what three-year-olds do right, right. <laughs> that's what they exactly. do that's it's not a surprise <laughs> but the devil mm-hmm. wanted to wreck your day and yeah. steal your joy and get mm-hmm. you all unraveled yeah. over what three-year-olds normally do right. well that's good Kindle <laughs> yeah. backstage it I mean, it's very interesting to me you just told me it, it, in your generation, it's popular to be stressed out. Now, tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, um, it's so popular. Like right now when people ask, how are you? The most common thing you hear is stressed every single right. time. And a recent survey actually shows that eight of 10 college students report that they have a stressful life events regularly. Mm-hmm. And one of 10 have had suicidal thoughts regarding that stress. And so when it comes to college age students, the shoes of peace are just so important yeah. because that comes with looking for a roommate or living with people who right. you don't necessarily get along with, mm-hmm. you know, or rushing and going through recruitment for like Greek life and things like that. Um, and peace actually gives us a foundation so secure that we're not moved by what we see and what we hear. Um, and they keep spiritual enemies where they belong, which is under your feet. But it is a very common thing in our culture right now to mm-hmm. be anxious. That anxiety right. is just a thing that I guess we're all struggling with at that, the moment. That's funny. I just, uh, I was listening to some clips from uh, graduation speeches and this speaker <laughs> stood up at a college graduation and said, I want to congratulate you. You just finished the easiest part of your entire <laughs> life. Yeah. And that's beginning yep. to be a thing. But it, so stressed out. Yeah. Right. Uh, over what? I mean, you're in college. You're just so, so stressed true. out. And, and we've got to be able to get a hold of this scripture. Corbin, tell us about high school. Right. So high school, um, it's really, it's, a, it's the easiest part of your life, like Tim was saying, but it's really cool every day to go in and build relationship, but also every single day to be tested by people, how you're going to respond. And God is always testing us everywhere we go. So able to build those relationships and build that foundation in high school and to go into life, um, which is the stage I'm in now, the belt of truth is so important in that area because if we don't understand um, as individuals with the truth of the word and what God is doing, yeah. we're always going to be deceived. Yeah. Um, therefore, yeah. we're always going to fall to every single small attack or big attack of the enemy. And we're in a generation of young people now who's so consumed with entertainment, social media. So how do we yeah. teach a culture desperation that is so consumed with appeasement? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love Corbin in, in high school and, and just having the opportunity that I've had watching him be at our school here and growing up. You know, Corbin was a leader. He stuck out as a leader in our schools. But I think the main reason that Corbin stuck out as a leader is because he understood what it means to walk in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think so much of what you read, Paul was illustrating, you know, Jesus said, abide in me. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you're going to bear much fruit in your life. Mm -hmm. And I watched Corbin walk in the abiding presence of the Lord, the shoes of peace. Okay. Well, he wasn't getting in fights every day with everybody. He was a peacemaker. You know, he was a leader, Mm -hmm. you know, the helmet of salvation. He knew who he was in Christ. Therefore, you know, he could lead other people to Christ. I heard lots of his classmates talk about him saying, you know, Corbin is a, is a godly Christian leader in our school. And so that's because he was able to transpose what the Bible taught and make it applicable in everyday life. And, and 
okay, that's what that looks like. This is how I'm able to lead. This is how I'm able to walk in peace. This is how I'm able to get along with my classmates because I'm able to take the word and actually apply it in my everyday life. As we were talking about the breastplate of righteousness, I also was talking about Corbin as an example because what makes you righteous isn't the, the list of all the do's and don'ts and okay, he did all the right things, so he's righteous now. That's doing mm-hmm. all the right things, now you've obeyed the law. But it's whenever you have mm-hmm. union with the Lord that makes you righteous with him. And so, mm-hmm. you know, that breastplate that protects you, so he's lived in such a righteous posture that if someone were to accuse him of something, that'd be so far-fetched. Like, I can't mm-hmm. even believe that right. because of how he walks and That's the righteousness. Good. So yeah. the Lord is your righteousness and he protects you. Yeah. You don't have to make mm-hmm. that happen by doing yeah. good deeds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need to... We need to remember when when the Bible says, put on your shoes of peace. Why does it say that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it says that because if you don't, right. your three-year-old kid yeah. running away from you in Old Navy is going to all, steal your peace. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. If yeah. you don't put yeah. on the shoes of peace, right. you won't make it in college because everybody's so stressed out yeah. and, and, and freaked <laughs> out. Uh, Kendall, go ahead. It's so true. And just going back to what Corbin was saying about the belt of truth. Um, when it comes to a lot of college classes and philosophy classes oh, and things good. like that, whenever yeah. they're speaking to you, if you don't know truth, you'll believe any lie. Mm-hmm. And what I've noticed too is it's not necessarily an opposite of what Christians believe. It's a different form right. and it's just a skewed truth. It's mm-hmm. not just you know a complete opposite lie. And I've just noticed that what I'd hope what we'd be more scared of is complacency mm-hmm. right. rather than not knowing the answer to like an opposite question. And if you don't know truth, first thing I notice, wait a minute, this person don't think straight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Just about practical yeah. daily mm-hmm. issues. You, I hear them talking, this, you're not thinking straight about this. Well, and truth is relative now too in our culture. It's, what's right. your truth? What's my truth? What's mm-hmm. his truth? You know, okay, so whose truth is the right one? And so, you know, as a human being, as a mother, who doesn't get a lot of sleep, when I wake up, my truth can change that day based on how I feel in that moment of what my standard is. And so we have the word of God, that is our standard of truth. So Mm -hmm. if you've had a big loss in your life and you're not thinking clearly and you don't know what the right thing to do or the right thing to say, well, here's your standard of truth right here that you can go back to. That will every time guide you back what your thinking needs to be of what is truth exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This morning, it's kind of funny, I forgot my belt. So I've been pulling my pants up all morning. I was thinking, man, I forgot my belt. For whatever reason, I got in a hurry and left the house. And you, you know, when you meet somebody, the first thing you say isn't, man, I really like your belt. And it's like, I like your shoes, or I like your shirt, or I like your cap, or whatever. But people rarely notice the belt, but the belt holds everything together. Yeah, right. You know, and, and our associate pastor, David yes. Pate, and I were in the back, and we were talking about one of the things that people really need today is a commitment to truth. Live in a life that yeah. is upright. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Live in a life that you're truthful. Mm-hmm. You're honest, you have integrity, and you walk in that every yes. single day. Because if you don't have truth and securely in the center of your life, yeah. mm-hmm. then your life will just fall apart. That's you good. can't run your family, you can't run your business, you can't live your life if you're not a person who is committed to being truthful, being honest, mm-hmm. walking in integrity mm-hmm. every mm-hmm. single day. Truth is vital yeah, for right. us. Really it good. is vital, mm-hmm. Corbin. Um, I think another important thing Um, with our salvation as our helmet um, before we understand truth is that we first have to understand that we we're not sinners saved by grace but God sees us as saints Mm -hmm. Um, and we we had first have to understand identity Mm -hmm. before we can get anything else or go anywhere else with the Lord it's really good Um, first Mm -hmm. Peter 2 9 says but we are chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who call you out of darkness and into the wonderful light. So if we understand that identity, we walk into high school every single day, our jobs, or college, um, and we know who we are, we can stand on that, and we know that we have favor from the Lord. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. And the helmet, it, it protects your mind from inferior that's thoughts. Good. Mm-hmm. Right. A thought mm-hmm. process that you can't allow to come mm-hmm. in. So mm-hmm. with the season of life that I'm in, it's really easy to become insecure or to think thoughts of like, am I good enough mom? Am I a good enough right. wife? Right. You know, I'm supposed to look a certain way, act a certain way. Yeah, I can look at other moms on, you know, highlight reels on social media <laughs> um, and compare myself. And so putting on that helmet, it keeps all inferior thoughts out of my mind. So good. Um, you know, there's a, a war being 
being waged against moms and um, a popular thing right now in culture for young moms is, um, you know, just to take the edge off, drink some wine, you know, to feel better about your life, watch this reality show, mm-hmm. listen to this feel good podcast, that'll make you feel better about yourself. Uh, but none of those things will bring peace and, and will clear my mind like the helmet of salvation mm-hmm. will by aligning right. my good. thoughts yeah. up with his thoughts. What, what, what's sad to me is when saved people, when folks that are saved, has salvation, don't put their helmet on. Mm -hmm. You're reacting right now to this situation like somebody who does not know the Lord. Right. 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 You you have the Lord. You have salvation. And that's why he says, you got to put this helmet on or you will respond like like you're not even saved. Yep. So, and exactly. that's where, like, I love that Corbin mentioned identity because that has to do with the breastplate of righteousness as well. Our mm-hmm. identity is now righteous mm-hmm. to the Father. And right. when we don't see ourselves as beloved, we don't see ourselves as righteous, good. your heart is easily mm-hmm. wounded. And it kind of talk, it goes with the breastplate because the breastplate initially cover, covers your vitals. You know, it mm-hmm. covers your heart. Yeah. It covers right. all mm-hmm. the things that are so important. And so whenever you don't have that breastplate and saying, this is who I am, that I know my identity, we become super sensitive and are just wounded right. easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of interns that come through Applied Life Leaders Academy. You know, it's our college age internship. And, you know, and they come from all different backgrounds of r- religion. You know, mm-hmm. some of them are mainline denominational, some are non denom, whatever. And I remember one particular year, there was a young man here, and he came from a mainline denominational background. And he was always kind of of the mentality of, I'm unworthy. I'm, mm-hmm. a, I'm a sinner, I'm unworthy, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's only because of God's grace in my life, which all that is true, right? right. But it's kind of like you said, it's like, it's, it's skewed though, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And so I remember we were getting ready for a men's conference and I had all the interns around and I asked this particular young man to pray and he just started, oh God, Lord, we're just, we're worms in the dirt. God, we're just awful black-hearted sinners. And I mean, he just broke off into this prayer. And I thought, I'll never, reco- I'll never recover this, right. you know? Yeah. And so after we got finished praying, all the ones left, and I asked him to stay back with me. And, and I said, hey, do you really believe what you prayed? And he said, right. what do you mean? And I said, well, you said you're a black-hearted sinner. You're a worm of the dirt. You're as low as a, you know. And he said, well, oh, Paul, you, you know what I mean. And I said, well, I guess you mean what you say. Mm-hmm. And then I said to him, First John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And I says, what does A-double-L spell? And he said, all. Mm-hmm. And I said the whole scripture over again. And I said, what does A-double-L spell? And he said, all. And I said it over again. And he started getting really frustrated with me. And I says, what is a double L spell? And he said, I said it, says all. <laughs> and then it hit him. And he goes, oh, I guess that does make a difference. Right. Uh-huh. And it does. And, and that's why it's so important that we understand the breastplate of righteousness. Mm-hmm. That, right. you know, the scripture says no one is righteous, not even one. It's Jesus Christ mm-hmm. that makes us righteous. Right. Well, that empowers us every day to know that, hey, it's not based upon me and my good works. It's based yeah. upon what Christ has done right. in my life. And that young man Absolutely. was really, really set free. I mean, mm-hmm. he started crying. That's Tears awesome. were coming down his face. God began to move on him because he was just under the spirit of works and trying to earn right. God's favor. It was well, so that, powerful. We're not talking about being prideful, we're not talking about being mm-hmm. cocky, mm-hmm. not talking about thinking that you're perfect and you have no fault or sin, right. Right. but we are talking about righteousness. Yes. Right. And so mm-hmm. you put that on, you have been forgiven. Mm-hmm. If God is on your side, then who can be against you? There you go. Right. Greater right. is he that's in me than that's he it. that's in this world. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't think those thoughts Oh boy, this is going to take me out. Well, this is the right. big one. Well, mm-hmm. this is, I mean, you just get caught up in how bad life is, how bad your kids are, how horrible this is. I should have been a better mom. I should have been a better dad. I should right. have done. Yeah. Right. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. God's on my side. God's right. going to mm-hmm. see me through and I'm going to come out of this thing victorious. Yeah. There you yeah. go. And, and I don't have to wait and see what somebody else thinks about me, mm-hmm. what somebody else says about mm-hmm. me. Right. I am going to come out of this situation on top. Yeah. Right. I think you can tell how much faith 
somebody has based on the words that come out of their mouth, mm-hmm. just how they speak right. into that's a situation. Good. No, that's really good. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if my kids aren't acting right, if they are rebellious or impatient or whatever, I'm not saying those things. You're so rebellious. You're so impatient. So that's through great. faith, by faith, mm-hmm. I'm speaking, I'm prophes- prophesying over them. You're so well behaved. You are so obedient. Mm-hmm. You are so patient and kind. Good. Even if right. they're not walking in that right now, I'm walking by faith with my mm-hmm. words. Right. And so just have a conversation with somebody anywhere. Hear, just hear what they have to say and you can know what kind of faith they're walking in, if negative right. or positive, or if they're hopeful or if doubtful. So your words have a lot of power yeah. um, in what you say. It's really um, good. I think going back to what Paul said, you know, all throughout the Bible, there are promises that God has made to us. I think you have to prophesy your promise every yes. single day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, there's actually a song yeah. that came out by um, Brian and Katie Torwalt. It's about prophesying your promise. And it's so good. Like we have to, you know, the, the life and death is in the tongue. So mm-hmm. we have That's to good. prophesy a promise every mm-hmm. day. And if you say it enough, you'll start to believe it. Oh, um, your mind will start to believe yeah, it. Yeah, so, so really true. Good. And I feel like our culture is very obsessed with our feelings. Mm-hmm. And we believe that our feelings are truth mm-hmm. all the time. And I don't know where that came from, but here's, when it comes to feelings, like I heard this once and it really hit me, would you trust a friend who lies to you as much as your feelings do? Wow. Right. Well, <clears throat> and so, and it just, it kind of makes you think like, yeah. okay. And like what it kind of stirred up in me is I've got to get out of this. I feel therefore I am mm-hmm. mindset mm-hmm. and step into, I may feel this way right now, but I choose to stand on what he says about me because his word is always true, right. you know, and getting so at, because yeah. our feelings good. just going to tell us those kind of things. Uh, I, this whole scripture that we're looking at today has to do with us putting on mm-hmm. our walk with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's days you just don't feel it. Yep. There's days right. you don't even feel so saved. True. There's days you don't feel right. <laughs> but I put this on and I walk in it. That's right. it. It's, That's so good. It says in, in Hebrews 12, the word of God is living and powerful. Mm-hmm. It's sharper than any two edged sword. And Jesus, you know, he used this as a weapon against Satan himself. Remember when Jesus was in the wilderness mm-hmm. and he was being That's tempted true. of the devil to quit mm-hmm. and to give up and to bypass right. the will of God. And, mm-hmm. and even Jesus, you know, used the word. He says, it is written, mm-hmm. right? It right. is written, it is written. Mm-hmm. And so I love what Corbin said. And I love, you know, your feelings can be an enemy in your life. You know, you, mm-hmm. if you right. trusted your feelings like you did an enemy, you'd be, you'd be in trouble. God's mm-hmm. word, 17, John 17, 17, God's word is truth. That's why it's so powerful right. in our lives. And so we have to make sure that we're speaking truth out of our mm-hmm. mouths, not our circumstances yeah. and what's actually Good. going on in the middle of our day. Yeah, oh, this is right. terrible. You know, that's right. We, we, We've got to go back to that. You just mentioned, Paul, was Jesus hungry? Well, absolutely he was. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it is written. Right. Was Je- I mean, did, here's all the kingdoms of the world I'll give you. Well, who wouldn't want that? But it is written. That's good. You have right. to live on mm-hmm. what the Bible says, yes. not on your emotions and whims and feelings. And, and we got to stand up on that. Corbin, sorry. Um, so the sword of the spirit. Um, you know, like Paul was saying, Matthew chapter four, where he went to the wilderness, he was on a 40 day fast. And every single person in this room is gonna go through a wilderness season. It's true. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that's gonna take a lot of faith. But you also have to walk with the sword of the spirit, but that's not our our job to fight, that's God's. Mm -hmm. Um, So if we can just understand the revelation of it is finished, past tense, then we'll see the victory on display every mm-hmm. single day. Um, and if you'll just be seated with him every single day, like you'll understand that revelation of who the Father is and that so every good. place that you walk into, um, that demons should run and that sickness should run. Mm-hmm. If you be seated and you understand that that's it is right. finished, that yeah. we have that authority, well, that's good yes. um, so then good. those things will run. That's mm-hmm. really Absolutely. Good. We that's live nice. like this thing could go either way. Yes. We live that's like so the cool. jury's still right. out. Yeah. And Bill Johnson said, a Christian never wears any armor on his back because he was never designed to run. Oh, wow. wow. And if you, like, if you think, you're like, oh, there really isn't anything for people. And he said, we always f- are fighting from victory and not for victory. Yes, well, that's good. From, from victory. Man, mm-hmm. that's yeah. so that good. good. Yep. I love it when, you know, it talks about prayer close to the end. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people leave that out. But honestly, guys, if we all thought about it, I have not gone into prayer one time that I didn't come out of it feeling so much better (laughs) and so much more empowered. But it seems oftentimes we make prayer the last response instead of our first Mm -hmm. action. And prayer ought to be the very first Mm -hmm. thing that we do. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 18, pray always with all prayer and supplication Mm -hmm. in the spirit. And so when you're clothed with the armor of God, 
you bathe it in prayer, that whatever your needs are, whatever you're facing. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been in situations where I had people in my office and <clears throat> spending time counseling or talking or listening. And, you know, I always point people back to prayer mm-hmm. and praying the answer, not praying right. the problem. Right. And wow, it just makes a huge, huge difference in yeah. your life. Well, well, everything oh, there's around. just nothing left for us to do but pray. <laughs> <laughs> well, why isn't that first thing we did? There's first nothing left to do. Let's yeah. turn our life over to the Lord mm-hmm. and let him handle oh, my yeah. kid or my grandchild or my finances. Let's let the Lord help me with this. Yeah, I love that the sword of the spirit represents the word because I just, just from watching movies when there's a battle, it's like the, that's the first thing you do, the enemy is coming. The first thing you do, you're yeah, pulling the right. sword. And I know that I've been guilty of like <laughs> going to Google search for a um, solution before it's going to Absolutely. the word for a solution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, money's tight, a kid is sick. There, I don't know how to handle <laughs> handle confrontation it's easy to go to my friend to vent about it first get it all out but if I would just bypass all of that bypass Google and friends and go to prayer in the word first mm-hmm. <laughs> then the problem it works itself out it gets mm-hmm. figured out I never have to bring anybody else into it um, if I can depend on the word too it says the word is live and it's active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword mm-hmm. um, and you cannot win a spiritual battle without prayer or the word that's good so right? good so good. good Paul you had some scripture you said well, I, I think, you know, as we're looking at some of the things that we're talking about here, I mentioned First John 1, 9, it says that he is faithful to, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans 12, 3 says that he gives each of us a measure of of faith. So the Lord has given us these tools that we need to mm-hmm. live victorious. Yeah. Right. But we have to make sure that we're actually taking these tools that God's given us and right. we're putting them into action mm-hmm. in our life. It's kind of like you mentioned having it on your back. Mm-hmm. Well, your armor's not going to be any good to you if it's packed away in your backpack, nice and neat. Your armor's <laughs> got to be something that you bring out and you're actively mm-hmm. walking in mm-hmm. and applying every day. You know, when you wake up and, you know, I'm kind of corny, I guess, a little bit, but, you know, when you get up in the morning, okay, you know, walk through the routine. Am I, mm-hmm. am I putting on my helmet of salvation, my mm-hmm. shoes of peace, my belt of truth, my breastplate of righteousness, my sword mm-hmm. of the spirit? Am I equipping myself with these things mentally because if I don't then sure enough the battery is going to go dead the the (laughs) flat tire is going to happen you know Monday morning this week here's Monday morning for me I woke up and our outdoor cat threw up two fur balls on my truck (laughs) this long it was the most disgusting thing I have ever seen I was like why of all the places on my brand new pickup truck (laughs) Tuesday morning I woke up I'm I have my socks on right my fresh socks on I haven't put my shoes on yet I'm making breakfast I walk into the laundry room and our indoor cat had thrown up a fur ball right on the floor and I stepped right in the middle of it that's the grossest thing in all of life let me just tell you it's terrible and I'm and I'm thinking I need the armor of God right now or I'm going to kill two right. cats. Well, I, I think the problem for, for us, we look at our Christianity, we look at our relationship and our walk with the Lord as something we do on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we right. go yeah. to church and we are glad that we did and we went to church, we served the Lord because we went to church today. And, and we feel good about that. But then there is a disconnect mm-hmm. all week long good. from our Sunday morning experience. Right. Right. And, and this doesn't say put on the helmet of salvation on Sunday morning from 11 to 12. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it is a daily right. walk with the Lord. Yeah, we, I mean, we're created to bear his image every single day. We're the only thing that he's ever created that is made in his image. And so every single day we are made to torment the enemy. Mm-hmm. We actually are made more powerfully than he is. We have right. authority. Yeah. But he causes us to believe the lie of he's... There you go. He's, yep. mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yep. And he has the power above us. But he's roaring, but he has no teeth. So we're mm-hmm. meant to take authority and mm-hmm. torment him every single day. Yep. Um, and give God the glory. Well, and you have to release the faith. You can have faith, just like with the shield. Well, you can have the shield and drag it behind you, but what is it doing? So you can have faith, but it's when you release the faith, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you can have as much faith as you want and you don't pray for it. It's you grow it. So like, I just want to have really big muscles, but not exercise the current ones that I have. (laughs) You Uh have to exercise the current measure of faith that you have to grow it um, it further. And, you know, I just think, that we assume like God will take care of it. You know, God will take care of it. Um, But have you asked him to? Have you prayed about Mm -hmm. it? Have you fasted about it? Are you seeking him on that situation? You know, I just think if my six-year-old were to be like, point at the refrigerator and say, juice, Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
cool, what about it? <laughs> like, I want yeah. you to ask me, ask me for it. You know, I have the power at any point in the day to give him juice if I want to, but I want him to ask me for it. Right. And so mm-hmm. not just to assume that God is gonna do everything that you want him to do, but to seek him about it and to actually ask him for it, you're releasing your faith by mm-hmm. asking. I, right. I'm gonna preach a sermon, I think, soon on this. This last week, I heard um, a guy say, admiration of workout equipment in the gym does you no good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I feel like that's what, well, we come and we admire the Lord. We admire his holy mm-hmm. word. We mm-hmm. admire our church. We admire the Christian walk. And he, he was just saying, admiration yeah. of the workout equipment mm-hmm. in the gym does you no good whatsoever. <laughs> so right. Boy, there's yeah. a sermon. Yeah. For is sure. So true. There so is so a true. sermon. <laughs> well, Kendall, in the, in the halls of college and sitting in liberal college classrooms and dealing with surrounded with friends that are not on your worldview, um, you, you better have this scripture under your under your belt. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so true. And just, I noticed too, um, I actually have to do clinicals, which is actually being in the setting of where you would be. So I, we're going into different hospitals, different hospital rooms, things like that. And so it's been really interesting to talk to different patients, get mm-hmm. their different worldview. But mm-hmm. having Absolutely. that truth every time. I've just noticed everybody's searching for truth. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody, whenever they're in the hospital, they're hitting a low spot. They're, yep. they're in one of those spots mm-hmm. where I don't know That's what good. to do. And almost every single time I've had questions about my beliefs. I'd have questions about, you know, what do you think about heaven? Do you think, you know, those right. kind of things are constantly right. questioned yeah. in the workplace and in college. And if we don't know where we stand, we're going to give a wrong view of mm-hmm. who the Lord is yep. to them. That's good. I just, I want to make sure that we understand it's not the copy machine that's messing up that steals your joy. That's what copy right. machines do. That's why we have a contract on them. That's why the guy will come back and, and fix it. It's not the high school kids that you're around that are stealing your joy. That's what happens in high school. Yeah, yeah you have a flat tire. It's our response to all of these things that happen in life. Every day, all day long, it's your response. And that's what this scripture is talking yeah. about. Yeah. That's it. That's just you have a conscious are. effort that either you're going to give your joy away mm-hmm. or you're going mm-hmm. to choose to walk in joy. Yep. You know, I think it's so important. It, it's not really anybody's fault. It's not our mate's fault. It's not our kid's yeah. fault. It's right. not our coworker's fault. It's not our friend's yeah. fault that we allowed someone to rob our joy from us. Mm-hmm. It's our fault. Right. We mm-hmm. gave it away. And you know, yep. we, I think it's important that we have to remind ourselves because mm-hmm. if not, you know how the enemy does, he'll try to turn us, you know, into a martyr. Mm-hmm. He'll get us having mm-hmm. a pity party. He'll have yes. us feeling sorry for ourselves. And then before mm-hmm. we know it, we're blaming the church. We're blaming the pastor. We're mm-hmm. blaming our wife. We're blaming our husband. We're blaming everybody. And the fact is, God has given us this set of armor right. to mm-hmm. equip mm-hmm. us to live a right. powerful, mm-hmm. victorious, mm-hmm. overcoming life. Right. And in every situation, like you said, Tim, you know, we have to, we have to actively choose. Okay. Right now at this moment, yeah. right now, right now, I'm going right. to walk in joy mm-hmm. right now while the devil's yep. accusing me. I made the mistake. I blew it. I missed it. The devil's trying to tell me that I'm just worthless right now. I choose mm-hmm. to walk in the righteousness of Christ. Right. It's at that mm-hmm. moment that I activate that immediately yeah. in my life. Yes. And I know that, like, I know Kendall and Corbin, they've both been so successful in college or nursing school or whatever, because they were prepared in and out of season for mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. uh, not wait till I get in that bad situation. Now let me start getting my armor on, right. but the armor's been on, so you're yeah, ready for good. it. So it yeah. comes yeah. up against yeah. you, and you're like, okay, good. it's no big deal. I'm yeah. ready. Good. That's why we pray without ceasing. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that way, when situations comes, we yeah. we are in tune with the Lord, and so we know how to respond. Yeah. Right. Yes. So I told them, I told y'all backstage. I said the thing that I don't like about the panel Sundays is it goes by too fast. <laughs> I mean, we just we run out of time, and right. my goodness, mm-hmm. this goes by fast. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, I I like the way this passage starts out. A final word. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, Uh, you got to get this. Let me me just, here's a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Mm -hmm. If you're not strong in the Lord, the flat tires of life are going to get you. That is just the bottom line. If you're not strong in the Lord, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand. Mm -hmm. If you don't have this armor on, you're not going to stand when life happens to you. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, and I want to make sure our church understands this. You're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. It's not your kids. It's not your husband. It's not your coworker. It's not the copy machine. That's not the fight. 
That's daily life and it happens for all of us. Right. Yeah, the fight is the devil is trying to steal your joy right now. And as we've already mm -hmm. said, he's a defeated enemy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you've got mm -hmm. to come from the perspective of victory, yeah. not the perspective of you're behind. You're not behind, we're ahead in this That's deal. Right. Right. The good. only thing that our enemy can do, and he does it all day, every day, is to use the situation mm -hmm. of your life right now. Well, that's yeah. in your marriage, whether that's with your relationship with your kid, whether that's your relationship in your finances or in a relationship with your, your relationship at the work. What you're connected mm -hmm. to, he wants to use that against you. And you yeah. and I yeah. have to choose joy over anger. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We have mm -hmm. to choose peace over frustration and aggravation and irritation. Right. And we've got to get this. I just want to make sure as we end today that you know it's not your husband you're battling. Mm -hmm. It's not your wife. Yes. It's not your boss. It's, mm -hmm. it's, those are imperfect people. Yeah. They were imperfect before you met them. They're imperfect <laughs> after <laughs> you break relationship <laughs> with them. Right. Life is lived with imperfect people. We've got to get a hold of this. Church, life begins when you're strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm, when yep. you right. are mm -hmm. strong in the Lord. And to do that, you have to put on all of God's armor mm -hmm. and stand firm in your daily life. Mm -hmm. Y'all stand with us. It's good. It's good. Father, today, we thank you for your word to us. We thank you for your word of direction for our week. Lord, today, we're not just hearers only, but we're doers of your word. Mm -hmm. We put on our armor and we stand strong this week against the enemy. Our life this week is lived in peace and joy and the abundant life that you gave us to live. We honor you today and we pray your blessings over our week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.